let's get right into the news. <laughs> Do it live! Hello and welcome to the... <laughs> you fuck! Hello and welcome to the woodshed. <laughs> I'll be your host, Andy Brent. This episode will be the saxophone podcast. I am very excited because I just started playing sax this week. Anyway... Um, the artwork you'll see is by Daniel Gandelman, and we have the outro by Outer Realm playing Red Hot Evening. And let me tell you, you know, I, I hate jazz for the most part, but this song is fucking banging. I love this song. I just, I'm going to buy it right when I get off this podcast. I think it's amazing. Go check them out. Outer Realm. All right, so... I, you guys know me, Andy Brent. I just picked up saxophone. I'm a budding superstar. Uh, I was on the alto sax and the uh, trumpet mouthpiece sax, which I have invented uh, 50 years after like Eddie Harris invented it. Um, yeah, and I'll hand our introductions over to the guests right now. Hello, um, my name is Race Hoagland. I am a saxophone player as well, along with Andy Brent. <laughs> um, I've been playing for about like five-ish years, and I'm from North Dakota, which is kind of boring, I guess. Um, I also go to college, <laughs> and I, um, I kind of at an awkward point where I don't really have a primary horn yet, so I'll just hand it off. My name is Wyatt Ware. Um, I also play the saxophone. I play the tenor saxophone. I'm the guy who taught Andy how to play the saxophone. Uh, I'm a student at University of Colorado Boulder. I'm an undergrad. And I have nothing else. Um, my name is Simon Sundberg. Uh, I'm from Michigan. Uh, particularly, I live in East Lansing right now, but uh, I'm from Spring Harbor. And uh, my primary horn is the tenor saxophone, though I like to play soprano on the side quite a bit. A little bit of Kenny G action. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's me. All right, I am El Bono, the madman, crusher of all plebes, normies, and jazz boys. I've been playing the saxophone for about 25 years, probably longer than any of you degenerates have been alive. This is and, true. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, not wrong. My main horn is actually soprano, which, uh, you know, Kenny G is my wife. So. <laughs> but uh, I did. I have disappointed so many people. And uh, I do love myself, though, throughout it all. Throughout it all. I am living in Boston right now, and it is really, really cold here. So what are we talking about today, gentlemen? Uh, we're going to take a look at why we picked our main horn. Wow. Yay. Wow. Fun. Fun. So why why did you choose soprano? Um, you know what? Okay, so before I went before I went to uh Lee. <coughs> sorry, I can't say that without vomiting a little bit. <laughs> but uh before I went to uh Berkeley, actually, you know, I was an alto player. Like I started at Berkeley on alto, but um, before I actually went to the college, I found a cheap soprano sax. Now, we had a, uh, we didn't have Craigslist. This was still really kind of before Craigslist was even a thing or anything like that. So we had a uh, little pay print publication called the Want Ad. I'm sure you must have had something similar. Maybe, maybe not. If you're old enough, you might have had something like that. But we had the Want Ad. So I was selling a uh, really, really awful soprano sax for 300 bucks and i was like <laughs> i worked all summer i'm gonna buy this thing because i don't know any better so uh, i bought it and i really liked it you know and uh as we were going through uh when i was at berkeley you know all the alto players and i was still i still was on alto you know all the alto players wanted to sound like kenny garrett like kenny garrett was a thing now they just kind of sound like some monstrous like <laughs> classical music sound but everybody kind of 
I, I, I kind of has this like straight eight feel, even when they're supposed to be swinging their eighth notes. It's it's really weird. I don't like it. I'm old. I'm grumpy. But anyway, I started playing soprano more just because, you know, I just really connected with the sound of a horn. And I liked it enough. And plus, no one was really playing it. So I just ended up taking that up as my main because I was like, you know what? If if I if the alto sound like Kenny Garrett, I'm not a huge fan of Kenny Garrett. I don't really listen to him. I I really don't uh, enjoy him. The only Kenny G, in my opinion, is the uh, the G man himself, the master, my waifu. So no other Kenny G is going to replace him. So Kenny G plays soprano. I love how you and I play soprano. You named the. Ki- you named the Kenny G of the horn, Kenny G. I loved yes. that. That was good. <laughs> Dude, I'm an accidental, accidental genius here, man. Accidental genius. But anyway, so I played soprano because no one did it and everybody hates it. <laughs> That's pretty great, though. I really do like the sound of the soprano, though. It's interesting that you say that. Yep, yep. So do I. Enough to not make a career of playing it. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you were saying that uh, normally they play with, like, eighth note feels straight eighths instead of swing you're saying that's now or back then well uh, there it's it's this modern jazz saxophone sound and a lot of guys get it from uh i'm not mentioning any names of anybody because it doesn't even matter anymore but they all kind of play with this very very straight eight feel and it's all this kind of like angular like pseudo modern classical vocabulary and but mixed with some traditional bebop kind of stuff. And I'm just listening to it, and the problem isn't so much the vocabulary. The problem is that everybody plays it exactly the same, and it's really, really fucking boring to listen to. So it wasn't like that back when you were at Berkeley? No, everybody literally, all the tenor players wanted to sound like Chris Potter, and all the alto players wanted to be Kenny Garrett. Nice. And I played soprano. I'm playing soprano like a dumbass. (laughs) And everybody's like, oh, that's... That's that's cool. So literally, I never got any compliments when I played soprano. <laughs> but whenever I played a different horn, everybody's like, "Oh man, you sound great on alto!" Or, "Oh man, you sound great on tenor." It's like they're just like you begging you to this stop is playing my, soprano. <laughs> this much, is my pretty art. much. <laughs> <laughs> so I basically, I've basically continued on in spite of all of them. Actually, funny funny story, and then uh, I'll wrap up my little segment here. But uh. We, I remember when I first got my saxophone, and I rem- remember the neighbor uh, lady who lived next door to us was like, you'll quit by Christmas. And I continued for 25 years <laughs> just to spite her. That's, spite is the best motivator. So basically, that's my career. I exist in spite of everybody else. That's, that's basically me right now. There's no career to speak of. I'm just here. I, I, I'm still here, and no one can get rid of me, which is great. Yeah, Spite's the best motivator in the universe, man. That's a pretty (laughs) good way to live, honestly. Yep. Not wrong at all. (laughs) Not wrong at all. Very trivial Spite. But yeah, I still love Soprano the best out of all all the horns. Like, it's the only horn I truly feel, like, comfortable playing. Hate. It's not that I hate tenor. I like tenor. I just don't like playing it in front of people. Yeah. I think I have a really kind of funny story about how I actually picked up the tenor because, like, being a middle school band child, I uh, they they always make they made everybody start an alto at uh, the middle school I went to, and it was really weird because, like, I remember because um, I when I was younger I used to listen to a lot of like uh, '50s rock and roll music, and so. Uh, I, all the all the guys in those records and in uh, jazz stuff that I'd seen played tenor, and so I said, "Well, being the young idiot child I was, I assumed that you had to play the tenor saxophone in order to play jazz." So <laughs> seventh grade, um, yeah, it was just a fucking mess, and I said, "You know, let's do that." <laughs> nice. We're gonna need Leroy to make another. <laughs> we have to cut that out. <laughs> got any good websites? You got any websites for me, bro? Yo, come visit me, boy. How do you do that fap noise? 
Yeah, that's all. That's all I'm in it for. That's the only reason I'm I'm in the, I'm I'm in this podcast is to to make them fat stacks. You know. That's all why we're into this thing. Just get money. <laughs> he's got to finish. Really, he just meant he's got to finish. I can finally stop masturbating. The podcast has officially restarted. So right now, I'm kind of at an awkward like crossroads between tenor and alto because originally, when well, like in sixth grade, when everybody starts band, I started out with clarinet, which is Ew. terrible. Yeah, it was awful. It's the licorice I'm stick sorry. of death. I fucking hate it. But the, the liquid <laughs> ice of sax. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, so I played that until like high school and everything. Well, I played it all throughout high school, and I still play it every now and then. But I I never liked like band or music until halfway through high school when my top jazz band needed a saxophonist, like a second tenor player. So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And my uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the um teacher was like okay yeah sure why not so he gave me a saxophone and then like i was two weeks from a concert so i like had to learn all this music super fast like i basically got thrown into the weeds and then after that i was like hey this is way easier to play than clarinet it doesn't like squeak (laughs) or anything and it doesn't change like fingerings for each note or whatever Uh, so was it Sorry, I was like choking for a brief. <laughs> yeah, you good, dude? <laughs> yeah, right when we mentioned clarinet, you started dying. Yeah, you're like, yeah, oh yeah. no, cancer. That's the usual reaction. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Oh, that man amazing. suffers death, poisoned by Damn. clarinet. Uh. <laughs> so basically, after I picked up tenor, um, I was always a, a like huge choir kid too throughout high school. Like I was gonna go to college for choir and like become like a vocal performance major or some shit but uh by the time i chose which college i wanted to go to it was the one college that i like auditioned and got a saxophone scholarship to so then like i tried choir out for like the first quarter and then quit and then switched to instrumental ed and like uh i'm in the bm program which is kind of like performance but whatever so then i started playing saxophone a lot more and i got an alto and I was always like a tenor jazz boy, but I had to learn how to play classical alto. And now I played first tenor or whatever last year, and now I'm a junior, and, and then I got uh, first alto. So now I'm like awkwardly sort of an alto player, sort of a tenor player still. Like, I think I sound better on tenor, but like I'm learning a lot more on alto and playing it way more than I do tenor now since I have no reason to play it. So like, I like... And forgetting all the tunes I knew on tenor, and now I'm like learning all these new tunes on alto. So I'm like an awkward where like I don't know a whole lot of alto tunes and I don't know a whole lot of tenor tunes. But I don't know. I'm just trying to sound like Kenny Garrett. (laughs) 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 I fucking love Kenny Garrett. He's my dude. Oh my god. But if you want to be my hero, try to sound like uh, Don Ellis. Did someone say Don Don Ellis? So let me tell you about this Donnie boy. I love him. Donnell. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, dude. Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So basically now I'm I play mostly classical alto because I'm technically like a classical alto player. Like I just had a recital today on that and I play a lot of soprano too in band. So it's like fifty fifty soprano, classical and classical alto. And then in my free time I play jazz on alto unlucky so i guess i'm like an alto boy now but i have way many way more time on tenor spent so Ray, i i have a question for you how many times does the lick come up in classical literature uh not a whole lot that i really? notice at least the stuff that we play no <laughs> at least i'm not listening hard enough. i don't know dude like we were just playing wc and there's not a whole lot of uh lick stuff in there there's a lot of harmonic minor that i just played today and um Altissimo notes, but that's that's pretty much it. A lot of that kind of shit. I don't know. (laughs) Sketches of Spain. The one instance in my multiple years of studying classical saxophone, the one instance of the lick I ever found was in um, the Iber Concertino da Camera. I think in the first movement, it's been forever, but there's there's a lick in there. Yeah, I played that. Yep, that's that's one I forgot about. Yep. I think I 
I think oh, I yeah, am stop. <laughs> Harmonic minor, the lick, lick. Okay, I'll put this thing. <laughs> on. That's 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 gonna get annoying real quick. I'm pretty sure I encountered it. Um, n this is not a saxophone thing, but I encountered it in a Gregorian chant piece once upon a time, but I don't remember what it was called. The Gregorian chant people were the OG lick yeah, people. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Which Charlie Parker, it's the Gregorian chant. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That's actually the name of the piece translated from the original Latin. The lick. The lick. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> With a plug of cannons at the end. Oh yeah. Um, why, Sh Wyatt? Uh, why do you play tenor? I play tenor because I grew up in a town where there was like basically no jazz scene. You know, I grew up in Monument, Colorado, which is in pretty close proximity to to Colorado Springs, right? Mm -hmm. And where all the jazz musicians are and all the jazz happening is in Denver. So there was like no demand for jazz or jazz being performed at all in the springs and it was all like rock cover bands and shit and that was basically the entire music scene down there and my dad had a, a load of connections because he's an event promoter he hires lots of bands he had a load of connections within the the springs music scene with those kinds of bands and I originally started playing alto in like fifth grade and um my dad said hey you play the sax you could be in a rock band i said yeah that'd be really cool so he got an opportunity for me to um sit in with one of these local rock bands and the song i got to play was brown sugar by the rolling stones Ooh, baby. Oh, and yeah. i found a i found a transcription of bobby keys's solo from the record and it's like oh no, this is for tenor. So I borrowed a tenor from the school and played it on tenor and performed it on stage. I was, I think I said I was 11 years old. I think I think that's how old I was. And from there, I was pretty much hooked on being a tenor boy. It's so much I, better. I, I seriously studied um, classical alto for, for quite a while, but tenor has always kind of been my main. <laughs> That's kind of funny though, because can I ask a group wait, of questions? Wait, 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 oh, wait, no, wait, wait! I want to talk about my up. introduction to sax. <laughs> oh yeah, so, yeah, Andy, oh, go ahead. The true so, actually, sax player here. Oh yeah, yeah I outrank all these Andy. motherfuckers. So I've been <laughs> <laughs> in high school. I actually, because uh, I've been playing trumpet since uh, fifth grade, I think. But yeah, nobody cares. Sophomore year of high school, they needed a berry player. And I saw, I was listening to Chet Baker and Jerry Mulligan, and I was like, holy shit, this is the, oh. Uh. <laughs> so I, I wanted to play Barry, but my director said it would uh, ruin my embouchure. So I just dreamed of playing Barry forever. And that's actually why I took up bass, because I just wanted, I wanted them low notes, them bass so you can play the the Monin bass line, <laughs> but like on a bass. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that one. But I bet it up. it up. Um. Yeah, and then I was never given the chance to play a sax until this week, where I asked my entire band, not my band, but the band I'm a part of, I was like, can I, can I, can I get a, can I get a sax? Cause I have this thing coming up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh my my good old my good old pal buddy armando let me uh borrow his alto sex so i was uh sexiest man alive <laughs> shout out to armando not, not even close to a berry but it's fine and yeah um then i did the it's live stream and still I still an e-flat yes uh, yes you did so what what was your biggest challenge playing saxophone i gave I gave Andy the mouthpiece and read. And the next strap. I gave Andy the important stuff and the next strap, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the hardest part about it um, really was just trying to get my embouchure to, like, produce a note. Like, once I – it was just hard to get a note out. Um, I th One of the main problems I found is I just need to put way more air I just was scared of just fucking blasting, <laughs> but uh, like a lot of the lower notes, it just I just had to put more air than I thought it needed. So once I started doing that, it was easier. But it's like 
I never figured out the embouchure. Like I'd always have to reset and like keep changing until I got a note. Everything else was, I mean, it, it, that, that is really the only thing. Altissimo <laughs> fucking yeah, hurt my we'll lip. That, yeah. <laughs> I, I, my lip is like damaged on the bottom. Cry it's just river. now starting to get healed, but. Um, do you have do you uh, have a newfound uh, respect for us sax boys now? Yeah. <laughs> no, not no. really. <laughs> we're, we're, not at all. <laughs> we're, we're just the worst. I was like, this is easier than I thought. Well, we deserve no respect. Well, you know, I have actually. If you watch that fucking live stream, I I started bragging to my friends because Wyatt was like. I was like, how do you do Altissimo? And he's like, dude, it took me five years to do it. <laughs> and I was like, I'm, I'm going to show this boy right now. Do you think being a trumpet player like, plays into that because of like, kind of training your vocal track to do that? or? No, I, I, I actually, I actually no, 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 no. I have, I, I actually Maybe. know <laughs> the, the answer to this. is because both instruments deal with a hefty amount of back pressure, believe it or not. And that back pressure mm. destroys most of your brain cells. It basically leave, leaves you a drooling, a drooling shell of a man, a <laughs> drooling imbecile, <laughs> Can't a shell so. of what you once were. So both instruments are pretty close because they no, take they take equally low intelligence to be able to play. All of that fit into our guidelines. So oboe players are I mean, just dead then <laughs> <laughs> that feel when too intelligent so oboe players so oboe players grace was saying are like they deal yes. with so much back pressure that they just become vegetables yeah Within and the then first they have two classical careers playing, stretching for like 40 dead. years so andy were you were you just like biting the reed to play altissimo notes? Like, were you just like chomping down and blowing really hard to get it squeak really high? Um, no, I actually, I can't tell you exactly so what I did. Secrets of the masters. I, well, one, I can't remember, and two, at the time, <laughs> at the time, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I, uh, it wasn't more air or faster air. It was more, uh, I wasn't just biting the reed. I was biting through my lip, but like. It was also redirecting the air in a certain direction because hey. I, th I, I don't know what direction it took me a while, but yes, also it was redirecting the air and then also fucking up my lip real hard. But yeah, um, that's kind of, that's kind of how it works. <laughs> I don't know about the back pressure. I didn't really notice any of it. The, and the, uh, the jaw movements. Cause I found I had to drop my yeah. jaw a lot for a lot yeah. of the notes. And that's not something I typically do on, on trumpet, usually my jaws just almost always drops. It's all lips, um, right? Because because you want to get that fat fat noise, and yeah, I mean, y there's not really that an fat aperture. Don Ellis sound. <laughs> there's not really an aperture I'm like maintaining to unlike trumpet where I have to fucking do lip extra like weightlifting every day to keep my aperture strong. Mm. Yeah. Cool, cool. What was your Should question though? I think what he was – I'm sorry. I think what Andy was actually doing was getting, like, a really high overtone just, like, off of a middle note, like, off of an open C sharp or something. He would get, like, the oh, C wow. sharp two octaves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's what I was hearing. Don't fucking – don't, when don't I was drag me him. down. <laughs> it, was really it sounds about right. Well, uh, look at it this way. Like – 90% 90 of playing trumpet is knowing what the overtones are and being able to hit them at will. Yeah. Know? So I, I could see a trumpet player being really, really good at that, but uh, on playing a saxophone. Though the, I saw this, yeah, like, I was watching this one guy doing all overtone solos. Have you guys seen this? Yeah, dude? I think I know who you're talking about, actually. Yeah, yeah, he does like all this overtone. Dude. And, and dude, it's like impressive. It is, yeah. It's like super impressive, but then. Like, 90% of me is hyper-impressed by the kid, and then 10% of me is like, but why? <laughs> it sounds like Adam that... Rappa. He does a lot of, he's a trumpet player, does a lot of overtone training, Tibetan yeah. shit. Mm. Wow. It sounds like that, uh, have you guys seen that, uh, what is it, U.S. Army video where they have, they go and see all those saxophones in that guy's house or something, and then oh, they and find the bugle this, sax, yeah. right? Yeah, where it's like all, it's just a perfect low b flat and he does like that or whatever on uh overtones 
Uh, that's insane to me. <laughs> I can't yeah, do that Yeah, that definitely takes a lot of facility, for sure. But you know what takes even more facility? Don Ellis. So, our, our man... <laughs> Circular breathing. Kenny oh G, my! Hello? Don't don't get that. We're saving that for another thing. Not I, yet. I fucking hate circular breathing. Anyway, uh, Brian Murray, I believe, pronounces his name, made this wonderful instrument that has been trumping all other saxophones, called the balto, which consists of an alto horn with a with with a Barry sax mouthpiece just haphazardly duct taped to the front of the horn. Well, and he also I encourage uses everyone, toilet paper. Toilet yeah, he oh, uses yeah. like cloth, paper. cloth around the cork. Mm-hmm. I encourage everyone to go check out his video, um, the groin scraper, and make sure you <laughs> you make sure you stay toward the end because after he's done with this beautiful solo, he sits down and smiles a freeze frame at the camera with the most shit eating grin, and it's <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> You also yes. the the quality of the sound is like really low, so you have to turn your uh, volume up all the way. Yes, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure, actually. Crack the volume and wear headphones. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Wear headphones at full volume. It's Please great. do not sue me for this. <laughs> <laughs> I am not responsible for any damage done to your ears. But it'll be fun. <laughs> or brain. We promise. For us, it'll so, be fun for us. Not yeah, not as you all should know, jazz wrecks the brain, and I am not personally responsible for any choices you may make <laughs> in your jazz journey. Well, jazz is just a horrible choice to begin with. That's right. Fair. Terrible. That's why, you know, that's why my boy, <laughs> my boy Leo P., he is uh, he's revolutionizing uh, the sax and jazz. Brass House, uh, killer. Uh, the new jazz. Uh, These are odds of joy. Uh, that guy. The Le- walking, the living, guy. breathing meme. So I, I'm gonna, I'll tell you guys, I really liked him, and past tense. I really liked him when I first discovered him, and I was like, holy shit, look what he's doing with a berry. It reminds me of Dennis. Dennis de Blasio? Is that? Yeah, I think. Whoever played yeah. in uh, yes. Maynard's band. And I was like, holy Bruce shit, Johnson. this is wild. And also, I'm a trumpet player, so I, I have an affinity for high register I stuff know. played on low instruments. But, um, they're, okay, first things first, their trumpet player is fucking killing. Like, he has a sound that I haven't really heard. He's so growl oriented. Like, like, so chops? props to him. He's. About? Your band, Lucky Chops yeah, or whatever. He's he's a cool fucking dude. Um so I I loved their music. I was like, yeah, this is good. I'd listen it from time to time. And I tried to get be hip with the kids and be like fucking, you know, I only listen to Skrillex. And I was like, Oh no, check this out, man. Um, <laughs> and I, I think the I think the the brass house genre where they, they improvise with kind of that dubstep house feel is really cool. But I went to one of their shows in Denver, and it made me realize something because I felt bored the entire show. It's like every single song sounds exactly like the last one. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I was like, holy, oh gosh, it killed it for me. I can barely listen to them anymore. I mean, one thing I think is, well, another band that I heard of before, uh, Lucky Chops and Leo P and everything, was Moon Hoot. Yeah, I love Moon Hoot. I, I was like, just I like, about to talk I like them that. more. It, I, I actually like, know, I, think, I know those guys. They're 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 good people. I cool. like Moon Hoot. Yeah, dude, their their music is all seemingly a little bit different. And I think Andy was saying earlier, whatever their their use of dynamics is really, I don't know, stimulating for me. Yeah, yeah I was listening to their Tiny Desk. Uh, concert and I was like holy yeah. shit this is what this is what too many zoos should be like it, for it sure, was for killing real. and I love all the comments on the drummer cause everyone's like this, di- like this guy looks like he can see sound he's just his <laughs> eyes are wide open and it's like he's having a seizure on the drum set oh, while he's geez. playing but go check out Moon Hooch I love I'm gonna be checking them out soon They're uh, I love but their music it seems to be general it seems to be general consensus that Moon Hooch are kind of the 
the modern peak of the the brass house genre for real yeah mm. that just that just that just seems to be the the common yeah. can i make I, an admission an admission of guilt i sure. didn't know what brass house was until now oh really? yes huh. well i, I mean i, I don't know, know if that it... was a thing I don't know if it was ever like the future really I will I will end you. (laughs) I just know at a Ted uh, at the Ted concert, I guess, Ted Talk. I don't really know what they call it. Ted Talks concerts? uh, Serious? uh, Yeah. They well they had uh, too many zoos on there. And oh, they just called their now. second piece Brass Brass House, and they kind of just said, "Oh, it's a genre we made," which I don't know <laughs> if that's true or not. I, I yeah, think that's uh, false. Yeah, you but know what? I I I, I, I have it, a but... particular distaste for uh, our 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 wonderful multicolored haired uh, saxophonist. <clears throat> quote so l- unquote, l- let me tell you the m- the most interesting part about that concert I went to. Um, was actually him just hip thrusting all the time. Yeah. He just he goes so fucking hard. Do you think yeah, he's emulating yeah. the epic sax guy though? Like in that motion. Holy shit! Uh, I mean, po- that could be a precursor. I think he might be. I, but he, I, he's I, definitely taking it I to a new level. I really started son. hating him personally, on on like a visceral level, um, when he had this stupid concert. Someone sh- sent me a, a link to it. And he was, was somewhere in London, proms? and he played Moan. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, and that just made me, all that made me want to do, because it's very hard to hold the madman back, but sometimes it just bursts <laughs> through. And this one, he was just like, he's not even a jazz boy. He's a pleb boy <laughs> playing a saxophone. That was the worst thing I've ever heard. Literally the most awful, horrific thing. And now it is my duty <sighs> to destroy the plebs and the jazz boys and everyone else who would consider that music. I, th- I think he has a lot of good technique. He just needs to fucking expand his music. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, you know, we all played pentatonics when we were in high school, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Well, that I mean, that for we're me... <laughs> Yeah, we all we all we all did that with pentatonics in high school. Let me hear. <laughs> I mean, for me, like Leo P, like when I heard that recording and I heard his stuff earlier on, I thought he was like, it's all right. Like I like listening to it, but only when my eyes are closed. Like I hate his like little movements. I've been tagged in that stupid video of him dancing oh, in yeah. the uh, subway uh. so many fucking times. Like. It's so, like, by people that I, like, went to high school with that I, like, barely know nowadays, I always get tagged in that video. But, like, the thing that pissed me off the most in that uh, Monin video is not his playing, but when Christian Scott, like, one of my favorite trumpet players, was playing his solo, you can see fucking Leo P in the background, like, banging his head, like, head banging, (laughs) like, dance, still dancing around, like, distracting the audience from the Christian Scott solo. And I just think that's, like, overall, like, it's not oh, jazz oh, jam etiquette. It's not etiquette, boy. I have something just, to say. I fucking hated it. Say, say it, Andy. Speak. Say oh, it. my gosh. So that reminds me. There is a trumpet player, a lead trumpet player, named Lynn Biviano. And he's honestly a shit, shitty soloist, really. He's a good lead player. He's got a very interesting sound. Um, I, uh, I think he's actually I was in Berkeley um, now. I was, I, we did, so I not, I actually have to interrupt because this is pertinent to what you're talking about. Olympia Biviano at Berkeley, when I was there, he was running something called Urban Outreach Orchestra, and they would basically load us all up into a bus and take us all over, all over the state, um, but mainly greater Boston area, but all over the place, and we would just play for high school kids who were just, couldn't, just the worst like I have no faith in humanity after doing those concerts because all they would do is throw shit at us. We're bringing the jazz mm. to them, and that's how you know jazz is dead, really. But anyway, Lim Viviano, um, I never really heard him play too much, but I just know he's got a bunch of a, a bunch of crazy stories, and he's obviously done a shitload of coke. <laughs> so. Okay, Sorry, Andy, but, continue. <laughs> yeah. So what does he have to do with saxophones, though, Andy? Are you getting yes. to that? Well, no, I'm just getting to how he's similar to oh, Leo okay. P. 
but like he's uh he has he has a really cool tone uh the best example i can find is dancing men it's on a buddy rich dvd that is now off youtube so if you can fucking find it and send that to me i'd appreciate that but anyway um his his wikipedia his wikipedia page it says lim biviano last time i checked it says lim biviano um gosh what is that instrument called oh shit uh oh tambourinist and trumpet player. Tambourinus first. What? Then trumpet player. Because if you fucking look at him, I'll, I'll send a link to the video. I think it's with Count Basie's band. He, so he like doesn't really play that much. He just like, oh, there's a double C coming up. I'll play that. Ah! And then he's done. <laughs> he fucking, every time he's not playing, he like jacks himself off with this fucking tambourine. He goes so hard. Like, it's like he's like me (laughs) he goes so hard with it he is flailing in the background and there's this video um gosh i think it's with count basie but like there's a sax solo and you see him in the background just flailing around and you can't even pay attention to the solo because he is just going so hard (laughs) he is diamond is so hard he's just wow it is insane, and everyone on the video is complaining that because he's me off so. Much. So not only is he the lead trumpet player that's taking spotlight when he's playing, even when he's not playing, he's taking the spotlight with his tambourine just exorcism he's doing. He's like trying <laughs> to exercise the third trumpet player. It is insane. <laughs> oh yeah, for Holy sure. Fuck. Anyway, that's my little rant. So. Simon and Wyatt, do you guys have thoughts on the Leo P? Um, I less on him because like my because I was first exposed to uh, Brass House through my dad. Actually, my dad really enjoyed Too Many Zoos and Moon Hooch quite a bit, and um, I was never that impressed with Too Many Zoos. I mean, like I am, I have a massive hard on for um, great stage presence and stuff like that. But yeah, I did get that vibe that mm-hmm. he's just kind of obnoxious, you know. And, um, but like Moon Hooch, I love those guys. They're really creative musicians and I really appreciate the stuff that they do. I have to check out that, uh, Tiny Desk concert though. I haven't seen that yet. I love those. But yeah, I, I don't have much to say, but I'm hyped beyond belief if you guys are giving that rave reviews. Yeah, they good. Yeah, so Wyatt. (laughs) I, I don't have as strong of an opinion because I have not been exposed to him that much, honestly. Like, good. I got, obviously, when Too Many Zoos was first becoming super popular, I'm the saxophone player in the family. I'm the musician in my family. So every single person on Facebook in my family who saw that video was like, ooh, a video with a saxophone in it. We got to tag Wyatt. We got to tag Wyatt. Yep. You know? Yeah, same, and up, I, I, <laughs> Literally everybody. I, I, listened, to, I listened to him like twice. I listened to him and he's, he's like twice. And it's like, okay, guy, you can do the same overtone rip 350 times. This is not very interesting. And I just never paid attention to him after that. No. Yeah, it's like haka haka haka. Uh, what am I? A buddy of mine says it's like haka 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 fwee. It's like that kind of thing. Haka 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 fwee. Yeah, that's and the fwee's always the high that's note, it. you know. Wah, it's like, but that's wah. the easiest thing to do. That's like the first thing you do on Barry. Is like haka 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 fwee. Ba 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 fwee. It's like that's the first thing you could do on Barry, before you actually play a note. You just play your low B flat. And then scream up like you know thirty <laughs> octaves above it. Cause it's yeah, awesome. that, yeah, for real. So moving on from Leo P, uh, are there any other? Oh, what did I say? Leo. You said Leo P. P. Oh, okay, yeah, right. but okay, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> whatever. Uh, overrated slash underrated saxophone players. Ooh. Obviously, we probably think Leo P is kind of overrated. Yeah, a little bit. I think Chad Lefkowitz Brown is a bit overrated. I really like and appreciate like what he can do as a saxophone player, but a lot of it to me when after I listened to him for a really long time is like a lot of the same or just a lot of like just crazy fast licks, you know, yeah. like he doesn't build his solo super amazingly. You know what yeah, I mean? That like kind of ties into um a pet peeve of mine. This is this will get me crucified. 
And like, let me preface this with, um, I actually really, really like Charlie Parker a lot, but like the middle to late part of his career, he starts to do, he starts to build all of his solos using the same like licks that he's like literally turned into cliches. And I hear that kind of in Chad's playing. And it, it, it I just hate that when, um, you, when you're improvising on saxophone, especially because saxophone, I feel is a very easy instrument to be creative on. Um, when you just cookie cutter licks into there, man, like how the hell? Yeah. How do you, how the how the hell do you get stuck in that box? I, think, I mean, if you're going fast yeah. at like 400, like he does, sure. But like fucking. Come I think on. you get to well, a point. Here's my, here's I mean, Chad my definitely. Oh, it's hard to shit on Chad Lefkowitz Brown too hard. Oh yeah, no, I'm he not. Does, no, not at he all. does. Not, he does. He does know the language very well. Yes. You know, he knows the language very well, but I've always said, you know, you want to try to do something innovative, and a lot of his playing, not every recording, there are some recordings where he does some crazy shit, you yeah. know, but a lot of his playing is like, yeah, we get it. You can play bebop really, really well. That's not really anything special anymore. Yeah. yeah I, I, let, me, let me interject a thing. My whole feeling on on Chad Lefowitz Brown, and to be very honest, a lot of many modern players, and these guys are around my age, so like <laughs> yeah, in their thirties, right. you know. And uh, this is my take: the schools have produced great technicians and people who can play correct jazz, but they stifle creativity. So yeah, you listen to. A guy like Chad Lefkowitz Brown or any other number of these people that are getting very well known on the scene. And what you're hearing is correct jazz. You're hearing just the licks are perfect. You know, they're doing their thing. And, oh, I played all this stuff so good. But people have played that like Sonny Rollins was playing that shit 60 years ago. And he played it better. So they might play it cleaner. But I'm not impressed. I'm not even remotely impressed by any of these people. It's just like, oh, there's the new flavor of the month. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just like... a jazz guy with a budget for promotion on Facebook. (laughs) There's a thousand tenor tenor players that sound like Chad Lefkowitz Brown. There's one tenor player that sounds like, like, like Mark Turner. You know, yeah. Yeah. nobody, yeah. nobody plays like that. And there's a reason for it, Mm -hmm. you know. Speaking of underrated horn players, Mark Turner. Holy <laughs> hell, God. yeah. He's a motherfucker. Yeah. I love Mark. Like, it's funny. I actually found out about him. Uh, there's this book. I don't remember the author, but it's called The Jazz of Physics. It's by this theoretical physicist who is also a jazz musician. The Jazz he, of Physics, not the physics of jazz. The jazz, that's that's cool. Yeah, it's a really cool book. Um, but he talks about he went to some club and he – accidentally got to see Mark Turner, who's one of his heroes, and I was like, oh, I'll go check this guy out. And, like, within five minutes, I was immediately like, holy shit, this guy is one of the best tenor players I have ever heard. Like, oh, man. And nobody talk. I, well, that's not true. A lot of people talk about him. I just don't hear about him enough. I don't even – I've never heard of him until yeah, now. Yeah, because I think there's an age limit now is the problem. So once you pass, oh, like, yeah. 40, no one gives a shit. It's like, oh, we need younger and cuter right now. We gotta <laughs> sell records. Uh, Mike Turner's <laughs> old and he's gross. He's what is he? Forty five? Fuck that guy. Well, how old yeah. is Chris Potter? Uh, probably about the same age. No, I, I feel like people him. still he's give a shit about him. Fifty right now. Yeah, yeah people still uh, give shit about him, but he's like a freak though. Yeah, like true. Chris <laughs> Potter. It's like uh, here's the thing. I, I stand in awe of some of the stuff he can do, but I it's just like I don't enjoy listening to him. It's just like I listen to him. It's like, well, that's some shit I'm never going to be able to do, so fuck this. I'm just going to go do, do think- my own thing. Because <laughs> he was playing I that like way Chris since Potter. he was 14. He was I do like Chris, too. 14, yeah, but- it's ridiculous. Yeah, he's oh, yeah. fucking crazy. I like Chris Potter a lot, and I would argue that, like, you know, you've got you've got, like, Lester Young, Coleman Hawkins, like the, and then you've got like Coltrane, and then you've got Michael Brecker, and those are like Kenny generation, G. generation defining tenor. Yeah, Kenny G, obviously. But those guys, I would yeah. say, are real generation defining tenor players. You it's know, true, I like, would say that Chris Potter is. Sound like Brecker. 
yeah, whether you like him or not, Chris Potter, whether you enjoy his playing or not, Chris Potter is a generation-defining tenor player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just going to say that after uh, Brecker died, I feel like he's the Chris second Potter coming. Kind of immediately just took that place, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's he's his playing, his concept is a direct extension of Brecker. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Honestly. Oh, yeah. You know. I think one of my favorite wish... underrated mm. sax players by far Bob Reynolds, my boy, Bobby B. He is so... Oh, my God, I love him. Does anybody else Bobby like him? Bobby B. He's my boy. I, li- I like him. Bob Reynolds. I like him. I think I, I, think I, I don't know a... anything about him. I just really enjoy his music. Like, over... Not, like... His playing is super fucking awesome, in my opinion. But what, he, what also he does, like, outside of his playing, his music writing is really awesome, and his vlogs, I think, are really insightful, even for, like, not saxophone players. I just really enjoy him as a person. Okay, we can go on to something else now. <laughs> I just needed to say something about Bob Reynolds. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I fucking love him. Um, I'm, this is, like, uh, this is a, probably an interesting question, for, just for me, but... Uh, how do you guys feel that John Coltrane is overrated? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dead silence. Yeah. I no. will end you for your blasphemy. I'm scared. How dare to talk. you? I feel. I'm not, I feel yeah. that yeah. the end of you John will Coltrane's feel nothing soon. Was overrated. I feel oh, that the end really of his free? career yeah. was overrated. I do not feel well, like you any of like the rest of out Coltrane's. On... Yeah, because he spent most of that, like, tripping balls on LSD. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like, that's just the thing is, like, I am a huge uh, Coltrane devotee. And so, like, I love, all, like, all of his stuff for the most part. But, like, there's some le- records that I'm not into. And then, like, some later stuff where people are like, oh, I don't like that. And I'm like, but, but it's so good. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like, I mean, for me... Uh, I don't listen to John Coltrane a whole lot, but the only thing that I don't really yeah. like about him is I fucking hate his soprano playing, and I also <gasps> think that... What? Okay, let me let me Uh-oh. finish. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> let me ahead. finish. Fight me, bro. Uh, <laughs> Fight me, bro. Fight me, bro. Fight me, bro. I'm and triggered. Like, after, just triggered me, bro. After he's been playing for, like, 15 minutes in a solo, like, I think his tone kind of goes to crap, and, like, I agree with Miles Davis telling him to fucking take his horn out of his mouth. Like damn. Take horn out mouth. Take horn out mouth <laughs> now, boy. Horn out. No, but like, mouth. okay, why I don't like move the saxophone? After, sure. <laughs> There's like an announcer yelling, but the the yeah. the main thing I don't like about his soprano, at least I haven't listened to a whole lot of it, but like on my favorite things, I I don't know if that sound is just oh, I'm not a fan at all. Yeah, Afro bro. blue. Bro. Afro blue. No, not a not bro. a fan. But like. Bro. I don't know, just for me, because I play a lot of classical soprano, and I listen to that all the time, and I know how pure you can sound on it. I just, eh. Bro. I haven't, I don't I know mean, any it, really good soprano players, though, other than, like, I've only heard, like, Bob Mitzer and who else? I mean, Joe's soprano. in the chat. <laughs> hey, I've heard you. I like how you sound on it. <laughs> who, me? Yeah, you, man. <laughs> yes, you. You, yeah. You're the soprano what? guy, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, I sometimes big soprano boy, right yeah. here. classic. I like soprano. Um, big well, it's boy. interesting to me. I like Coltrane's approach to it um, for the simple reason that like he tries to incorporate a lot of like world music, which is stuff that I really enjoy. And so he gets it to sound like an Indian mu- an Indian instrument known as uh, not a swaram. And like to me, I heard that when I heard uh, my favorite things because I've I've loved Indian classical music for a long time, and I heard that and I go. Holy cow, man. He's figured that out. And I'm just Here, like, that's so cool to me. Here's the thing. Uh, My Favorite Things was the first Coltrane album I ever owned. And I'm still, every time I hear this dude play the break on Summertime, I still crap my pants a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I like I, I listened to that when I was like 15. And it was just like, and I was just like, I don't know what any of that was, but it was awesome. Yeah, same. It's real. I really like culture. Okay, one. I'll talk about that. One for hours. solo we break. Move on to something else. One solo break that I fucking love. Uh, Charlie Parker on Just Friends. Holy oh, yeah. shit! Oh my god, that is a bop yeah, right that, there. Not to and be I, cliche, a bop. But the uh, the uh, fucking Night in Tunisia 
break. Oh, really fuck, like yeah. Lot. Even oh, though he yeah. overuses it to shit later, and it makes me sad. Yeah. I just listened to the yeah, break he, and then shut he off he the ended tune. Up just repeat. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. That was the thing with Charlie Parker. Is he repeated himself like a motherfucker? Like a what? He, did you just cut out? Like, like a, a motherfucker. Oh, okay. Like a motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. He repeated himself so much, man. But apparently, people were saying like when he was playing live, he didn't do that. So maybe that was just a thing when he was in the recording studio. Yeah, he's just I mean, like I it's gotta be gold. All, you know. <laughs> Um, so actually, I just was reminded of something. I'll have you know, my boy, my boy, the Donnie E, the Don Ellis, the Ellis Don gang, Ellis, Ellis, gang, of Don Ellis, 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 Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang, you know, Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang, Ellis gang. The Don Ellis of trumpet is it's Don Ellis, but he actually played with Eric Dolphy. <gasps> the clarinet boy. Can you send me that, like, please. I love Eric Dolphy so much. <laughs> yes. I'll have to find it. It was r way in the early years of the Ellis. I don't think I actually have any of the tunes on my playlist. Oh, yeah, for sure. You'll have to just send me a whole bunch of stuff later because he sounds really interesting and I can't find where to jump into it. Mm. Donnie is so good. Um, <laughs> should we talk anyway. about the Iwi? The Iwi. I think the Iwi. So explain what the Iwi is for those who don't know. So an, the don't electronic wind instrument. That's what it stands oh, for, EWI, yep. yes. Electronic Wind Instrument. It's the thing that Michael Brecker played that looks like a piece of plastic. It looks like a square piece of plastic, usually, with, like, saxophone keys. It looks like... Oh, it. I played it looks one, like, actually, <laughs> now that I think about it. It looks like if uh, someone put a clarinet in Minecraft. That's a that's an Iwi, basically. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, for me, I've played one. It's kind of weird. It's like hard to get used to it's almost like learning a new instrument i guess yeah. but it's it's all right if you could find a good patch or whatever you'd call it like a good sound i really really enjoy it when it's implemented like really appropriately and like one of the only recordings i like of the iwi is um oh fuck in a sentimental mood or whatever and brecker playing it with steps yeah, ahead I'm yeah really that right. whoo baby that's like the only good iwi tune <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion that shit slaps oh god yeah for real <laughs> so good i don't know it's all right i, I have no that drive to get one though i'd rather just get pedals for well, my you can, they're they're still really expensive too for what they are mm -hmm. well you consider all it is is a midi controller and you can buy a midi keyboard for under a hundred dollars and that thing's like eight well, the thing that's fascinated like me one. about it is, like, you're blowing into, like, a closed-off thing. Like, where the fuck does your air go? <laughs> like, what? It hits an air instrument? pressure Actually, sensor. That's the thing yeah. that probably costs a lot of money, the air pressure sensor. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's the, a uh, fish to operate if it's not working, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, no, there's a lot of small adjustments to be made on that instrument, which is just, I, I had it for, like, three years. I never got the hang of doing it. People have. People can play really well. I just never got the hang of that thing. Like Michael Brecker. Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was like one of the original dudes using it, you know. That yeah. was like, yeah, he, he was... helped develop it. He's I an think. OG. Honestly, he's probably the strongest force in popularizing the Iwi as an instrument. Yeah. If Michael Becker, <laughs> if, I ever, if I ever got Yo, an Iwi, I have a question as an aside to okay. our conversation. Where did the B sure. thing start from? <laughs> like, when I, I had no joined idea. shitposting at Jessicum, the B thing was already um, in full force, and I, I'm something... just like, there's, there's, it is to... the first the origin... uh, time I heard it was. Uh, it's, it's not appropriate to really say on this podcast. Oh, okay. okay. I basically I saw it I was, from like. I was it's not a jazz say, thing. The origins, the origins of the B of the B emoji being the meme that it is are less politically correct than what we can say here. Gotcha. Yeah, it's to it's to censor a certain word very poorly, and then uh, oh. at least all Peppers. and then uh, at, yeah, Peppers. it did not start in the jazz page. It just gradually. Ah, I see. And I see. then it became instead of censoring the. Uh, this one word, it just we just use it all the time for everything now. Well, actually, ah, like gotcha. the, I've seen it predating it a little bit, actually, um, where they just put it as the first letter of a word. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's got its roots in some weird. Stuff I've only just seen it from like ghetto Twitter. Of weird. 
hey guys, are you ready to get weird? Yeah. Because we have something we need oh. to talk about. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, no. We need. We oh, have yeah. a. We have a Wyatt. Get ready, man. We have a. Uh, I am ready. A oh, contingent God. that needs to be catered to. So, Wyatt, where? We know how much you love the anime. Destroy oh, your ideas. Who is your, who is your anime. ideal? <laughs> <laughs> Destroy <laughs> all of it. Who, Wyatt? Who is your anime avatar? Destroy all anime. <laughs> I will not rest until I avatar. destroy every Chinese cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> no Chinese cartoon will escape from me. <laughs> Who is your OC character? Your deviant art. Your Wyatt deviant Chan. art master. Why is that? Why you I want to die. Yes. <laughs> so. Should we? Oh look, it's <laughs> I I'm want leaving. to die, Coon. Should we talk I'm about just, Kenny G I, I instead? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! So here's the thing: when did when did this become really popular in the group? Because it seems like a relatively recent phenomenon. It's all because so of Andy's okay. fault. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Andy's fault. Is Andy is, <laughs> a, is Andy patient? Is Andy patient zero? Weeb zero? <laughs> so he's ground you, zero. Let me let ground me tell zero. you how this started. I was like, you know, I was like, I'm gonna force a meme, and I don't care how hard people push back. And that's where the monk meme movement came, where I put <laughs> terrible monk puns everywhere. And yes. as we uh, we had one of the strong supporters, Barnabas, uh, on for the episode one. Yeah. And I said, th the next movement will be weeb posting. And I believe oh. actually um, Barnabas oh. made the first one of that movement. Actually, I've made like some small things before, I think. But he was made the first one of the movement in that era. And then I went full force and just, I could not stop one day. I just, I <laughs> just found so many. So and, you walk uh, in and your roommate's God. like, oh, we have to have an intervention. This we, is too bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the one that finally made me crack was the one that I saw today with, with Papa Jojo's Bizarre. <laughs> I <laughs> I was oh, crying. No. Oh my god! I I literally got up and walked out of my room and <laughs> got a drink of water and then came back and laid in my bed. It's like okay, I gotta take a break now. <laughs> Too much. Because you do. Image. Because you know, uh, once the weebs get a hold of something, it it is just pure, 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 just nuclear it's, waste at that it's point. It's over. <laughs> it's over. The chess is over. Life is over. Now it's just cartoon, bizarrely proportioned cartoon people, and everybody seems to have a penis. <laughs> oh so, Andy, now, yes. now on your resume, you can So, put... who's the Berkeley Hentai Club? Oh, my God. Is that oh, you, my Wyatt? gosh. <laughs> what what is that? What that is. I forgot about that post. The Dude. Berkeley Hentai Club. Berkeley Bentai. Is, what, what is this? <laughs> What uh, what is I, going I, on? Well, I mean, you're I the one. I don't know, but I kind of want to infiltrate that group. You're the one who uh, went to Berkeley. You should know out of all of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, dude. When I, it was a simple time when I was in when I was in Berkeley. It was the early aughts. We didn't have such things as working internet, or the, any internet. Did you guys well, have? I was cell in phones? Berkeley pre Facebook, dude. Facebook did not <laughs> exist when I was in college. It was did MySpace. MySpace. MySpace, and even MySpace didn't come up for a few years Holy oh, before shit. I was in college. Oh yeah, man, that was the wild west of the internet. I don't remember MySpace much. <laughs> it was just really terrible. Really, just <laughs> terrible. It, it's all it's all just just awful waste. So, just, oh, yeah. just the scum at the bottom of the barrel of everything humanity has accomplished. Should be a segue into the better topic of Kenny G. <laughs> From Weeb Post. But yes. first. Oh, yeah. Well, but first, say. what would Candy G look like as an anime? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, if we're still doing. Um, I'm making it right now. It's a good idea. Players. 
If we're doing, it's still doing underrated sax oh, players. Okay. Um, my boy John Gilmore. Kenny G. Kenny G. I don't know who that is. Maybe. Kenny G. So underrated. Oh no, John Gilmore is the uh, he's uh, the main tenor sax player for Sunrise Band, and I have a unhealthy Holy man crush shit. on him. Yeah, he's a motherfucker. Oh my god! Like, so I did you see just the started listening solo? to Sun Ra. I started yeah. listening to Sun Ra, and I was like, uh, I still the world world fusion still doesn't get me free jazz no but every time he comes in with the sax i was like this motherfucker holy shit <laughs> did i send you um, a beast. yeah did i send you the uh i think it's there's a performance of them at montreux uh in 76 where they do a version of take the a train that is fra- to be quite frank uh on crack and it is incredible. But he takes a solo break for maybe three or four minutes. And I just heard that for the first time. And I just like sat there and was just like, nice. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, anyways, I love John Gilmore. He's super cool. But we could definitely talk about the far superior stylings of Kenny G. Kenny Ooh. Gorlick, the G Man. Yes. The waifu of jazz. <laughs> yeah. A major finally. in accounting. Or something didn't he major no, yeah he, yeah he also yep i major he thought he'd major in being a broom he looks like a fucking broom or like a mop it's a really dirty mop yeah he he majored in jerry curls <laughs> jerry and he ma- he majored in perms <laughs> oh my gosh. Honestly, though, like if you can make it as a musician, but you're an accounting major, like that's kind of impressive, in my opinion. He's got I, I just, business sense. I'm just thinking about that photo of him where he's like pointing to Miles Davis, and Miles Davis is like, <laughs> "Hey, white motherfucker!" <laughs> yeah, right. Oh man. Holy yeah. shit! It's like I'm already tainted forever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did, uh, did, was anybody in Jam of the Week where I actually got them to do a Kenny G Week? Oh my God! No, I I no. got them to do a Kenny G Week, and that was so much fucking hate. How did you? I do did a that? whole month of of like Kenny G music on my own shit, and then like I tried, man, I tried so fucking. And Farnell was just like, work. "Yeah, man, sure." No, no, they did it. There's a Ken- there was a Kenny G Week. Holy shit. I'm not even Were there any bops? Like, or was no I wasn't. I wasn't it. It was, in su- it was such a letdown, that. dude. <laughs> wow, oh, it was that's such incredible. A letdown. Actually, yeah, it was. I wasn't in Jam of the Week at that point. I guess I've it been, must have been more than a couple yeah, years yeah. ago. I've been in Jam of the Week for like a long time, but I've never like actually posted anything. <laughs> I'm too. I've actually posted twice, and the second one was me playing guitar. So it's like, oh, I remember that just actually. Ass. I'm only in it for business reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I gotta secure more members of the group. Yeah, he's exactly. actually he's a scouting agent. <laughs> he's doing some scouting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I we do can do get, that, man, if we can I go get out 60, and I got like a people. Jacob Man. Holy uh, shit! I appreciate you getting some other Jacob people. Man. I got. I like find people. I'm like, hey, your video was posted. Want to join this group? I actually, uh, yo, to put pressure on him. Uh, Roy Purdy. I, I I messaged him and I was like, "Hey, do you like jazz? Because he made like a take five thing, and I doubt he's gonna come on. But you know, I went to school with him, so he kind of owes. I've never even talked to the guy. Oh, <laughs> he owes it. Anyway, so uh, I cut you off, Abana. Oh, it's okay. Uh, no, 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 I I couldn't remember what I was saying anyway, because most of it is just static in my brain anyway. So Kenny G. The general consensus G, we- on him. His music is bad, but we can appreciate him being successful. Oh, yeah, yes. totally. Yeah. totally. Yes, his, his music is, is, is definitely... His music Dude, is I had a transcri- To do my arrangements, I had to actually sit and listen to that shit. <laughs> Wait, so... Oh, like, man. did you guys see that... Um, for, for hours. Did you guys see that video of him... Oh, what was it? It was like for Valentine's Day or something, and he actually yeah, played a tasty I lick. S- it was tasty. I th- I, that's really cute. I really appreciate him as a person. Like, the thing is that's really interesting to me is um, I always hear these, like, claims that he, can, he like, secretly is, like, hard shredder and all that kind of stuff. Oh, but I can't Lord. ever find any truth that I don't think <laughs> it's true He has an alternate persona. 
Yeah, he's he's secretly Chris Potter. He's in a secretly Kenny. Duke yeah, right. Silver. He goes he goes out. It's it's, it's Kenny he goes G out, Sama. He goes out in a mask. Kenny G Sama. In like in like in like a black a black mask <laughs> at night to all the New York jam sessions. And goes and cuts all the other tenor players. <laughs> he's, he's actually just ass. fucking. He's fucking Buckethead. There's yeah. like, no, there's like. He I'm doesn't even Kenny. play sax. He just is Buckethead. There's like ten. <laughs> I'm, I'm Kenny B. There's like tenor he's players got dying. He's in got the, the hair. Holy he's shit! Them all Wait out. a minute. Benny B. <laughs> Benny B. <laughs> I'm a Benny B. Y'all like jazz. Stuff all the memes. I have, yeah, I have a question yeah, for yeah, you yeah, guys. Y'all Holy shit! Like jazz. He has the same hair. Who? Conspiracy That's confirmed. Buckethead? Yes. Oh shit! Oh this could be a really good new conspiracy. What if, what if Buckethead is his long lost son, dude? Oh. Holy moly! Yeah, like he has that one. His one kid who's really good at tenor, but he's got his other kid who's just Buckethead. Yeah. Right. That'd be wild. Or bucket bed, <laughs> bucket bed, Book. bucket bed, and Benny B. Wow. Well. All oh, right. Well, yeah. we talked about the most important jazz artists today, jazz saxophonists. Yes. So I, I think we'll, I think we've, uh, we're done with sax forever now. No. <laughs> sax. Hey, I do, hey, I, I do have, a, I do have done. a, uh, I have, I have a good topic that we might be able to segue out on. Why is sax right. terrible? Why is sax the worst instrument? Uh, look at Roscoe Mitchell and any of his <laughs> solos, and you'll see why. That's, that's my opinion. <laughs> that's, yeah. It's bad because they took look away the that. really good pinky ergonomics of the old cons and old horns. See, I saxophone, think saxophone. <laughs> saxophone is, I think saxophone is probably the most terrible uh, for the simple reason that I think that is the most versatile, like the most versatilely used in free jazz, which, as we all apparently unanimously agreed in last podcast, is the worst form of jazz. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's because no one pays for it. Yeah, exactly. You can't make money. Gosh. Free jazz. That's all why we're into this thing. Skip money. Yeah. Get those dollars. Yeah, that's all. That's all I'm in it for. That's the only reason I'm. I'm into. <laughs> I'm I'm in this podcast is to to make them fat stacks, you know. Yeah, dude. Just like yeah, my hero right. Kenny G. <laughs> my hero <laughs> Benny B. Benny God, B. <laughs> Benny B. Making the bad packs. But but Benny and the bets. God damn it. <laughs> I I can tell you why I think I think sax I I hate saxophone. I hate sax players even more. I think they're terrible people. They're just. The reason why I don't like Gross. saxophones... They smell bad. <laughs> they drool on themselves. And they talk about chords and shit all the time, even though they can't even yeah, play you know, fucking that, chords. Things that real, real, real musicians just don't care about. Yeah, thanks, you know, Coltrane. Uh, have, you heard my, have you heard my interesting giant step substitution? Well, pfft, nerd. I <laughs> Shove him into a locker. I only like, or I don't like saxophone because it's like the fucking easiest... Um, instrument out, out of the woodwinds and fucking yeah, I heard that vibrate. But um, and like it, at least in my area, there are no brass players at all. It's all tenor saxophonists. Like out of in the <laughs> entire like if you the, if nah, you like fucking whole, go the collective IQ is just dropped. Like yeah, 50 if points. you go to a jam, it'll be like barely a rhythm section, only one bass player, and then like forty tenor saxophone players. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but like we have like zero trumpet players or anything. That's why. And we're all like almost about the same. Like, well, there's mainly it's me and two other dudes in the area that are tenor players that play at jams. That like I basically have to run because we don't have any jams. <laughs> but <laughs> we're all like the same skill wise, pretty much. At, unless if there's like a professor there, which never happens. <laughs> It's fucking great. Yeah. That's why I started playing alto more because there's so many fucking tenor players. Andy, I'm you glad should... there's a lot of like motherfuckers that play tenor in Denver. You know, there are a lot of really good tenor players around here. 
Andy, you got to go down there. You got to capitalize on that, man. If there's no trumpet players, you got to yeah, go dude, and play come, with Don Ellis. You'd yeah, probably be better. Gosh, I wish. Come home I to wish. Fargo, North Dakota, and we can hang and be cold together. It'll be great. There's, 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 there's a reason I've never posted anything more than high notes on the page. <laughs> Andy, North Dakota. <laughs> North Dakota is actually not that far from Boulder. I'm down to I'm down to fucking road trip that shit. Yo, come visit me, boy. Why don't you guys come to uh, friggin' interlocking with me and Guillermo this summer? I would love to do oh, that. Actually. God. All right. Well, this is probably right. coming to an end. Yeah. 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 Let's wrap it up. Yeah. This um, this, this podcast has... has gone terminal. Right now, we're I'm gonna kill you, Joe. I'm fucking gonna fucking phone, kill you. I will fucking destroy you. We're not a bass solo, <laughs> Joe. Come on. <laughs> All right, you this can't has be been checking the... your phone during our podcast. I'm not checking my phone. This has been the Woodshed episode three, the Sax Cast. I hope you all enjoy. This has been Andy Brent, Race, Simon, Wyatt, and Albano the Madman. Thank you for your time. And destroy all anime. Destroy. <laughs> destroy. Destroy, destroy all jazz. Destroy anime. All right. That's a wrap.